Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my 3Mark T62A game. This was played on the EU server, and it's the first tier 10 tank that I've managed to 3Mark on this server. Now, for this game, this is not some epic carry like most tier 3 mark tier 10 games aren't it's a very consistently played game and this is exactly what you know the majority of 3 mark games are like it's like it's well played it's well thought out and so on and so forth so to start off we're on overlord i'm going to pause it here because i want to talk about the, the very first thing you should do in a battle the first thing you need to do is you need to assess the enemy team lineup now in this battle obviously we're on overlord so the map takes into account where you're going to go but also the enemy tanks do so i look at the enemy team lineup i can see they've got a super conqueror a 430u and then a t100 lightweight which i don't really care about and then the rest of their team are non-threats mostly apart from the conqueror uh and then i also take into account the arty situation and the td situation so what I like to do on this, the reason I do that is because those tanks have the possibility of affecting my opening play on this map. I like to go to a position that allows me to get early shots and damage and figure out where people are going. And you can see that's what I'm going to do. And before driving into this location, it's like you need to take into account everything that you might come up against. So first things first is obviously I could fight the Super Conqueror driving into position and then Artie could possibly shoot at me. And then I'm also aware of the fact that TDs like to go at B4 and considering this position is open to the common routes that enemies take to get into position, so they love to cross right here. And then it's also open to TDs who sit back here. It's like, you need to be aware of that when making a play like this. So what I do is I come up to this position. Now I'm fully aware of the Super Conqueror's capability of snapshot. That's why I pull back to where I am right here to try to make to give the super conqueror minimal shot on me you can see he stops he was about to snapshot me but i was able to put a shot into him and back off just in time and then a 263 shell went over my head and what i decide to do because of the tank destroyer's location i decide not to repoke that now that's the opening stages of the game and generally it's really frustrating on a map like overlord because on other maps you can get like a 1, thousand fifteen hundred damage almost right at the beginning of the game but on a map like this when tds are able to just get into position so quickly there's almost nothing you can do so i put that shot into the super conqueror right here i'm looking for opportunities for damage again this is the stage in the game where you'd look for opportunities on damage like damage opportunities on people who've pushed up so the super conqueror had pushed up i was looking for shots but he's a super conqueror i'm not going to pen him so what i decide to do is once he falls back as i move up to the middle of the map and that's going to put me in a really good position to deal with anything that sort of appears because i'm in the center of the map i'm a short drive to everywhere now right here what i'm going to do because of the way the score is it's still a tie i don't know what's going to happen i'm going to sit in the mid even though i recognize that they're pushing through the nine line i like when i looked at this situation i didn't really think the enemy would win and i didn't really consider it a threat so what i decided to do is i decided to sort of chill out right here I noticed that I had shots on the T100 lightweight, and so I'm going to pump shots into this bush. He goes unlit. So what I do is I right-click. What, what I do right here is I right-click. That allows me to hold my aimer here. And then I look around, and then I'm also holding down the left-click so I can just put shots into where the T100 lightweight last was. So you can see the T100 lightweight gets lit. This isn't... Oh, yeah, I was holding right-click. That's why the mouse wasn't following where I was looking. I put shots into the bush. I was able to get a second shot into that guy. That was, or my first shot into that guy, the second shot of the game. And what I'm going to notice is that the nine line, which I didn't really predict to be a problem, has sort of become a problem. Because what happens on the nine line? Oh, I press start. What happens on the nine line when the enemies get to this location right here is they tend to absolutely destroy anyone who's in this T44 Type 59's location, as well as anyone who's on this ridge. So right here. Um, how do I deal with this? There's a, I have to defend against this flank. Now there's a stereotype that to three mark tanks, you have to sit on the red line. Now <laughs> I've been on the front lines all game. The way you three mark tanks is not by specifically dedicating your tank to the red line. It's by choosing the right situation for your vehicle. So right here, when I was looking at the map, I figured that ideally I could get into this location because that would give me perfect side shots on the enemy. However, if we'd lost this side of the map, which is something that I wouldn't be able to really you know, rectify if I was in that position, it's like I could not run away and that would get me killed. So what I did is I chose the best of the worst. I'm able to play a supporting role right here and help out my team with my 3600 DPM or so. And that's going to allow me to try to sway the fight on the 9-0. And that's going to allow us to sort of, I mean, it helps us bring back this game. So you can see the Conqueror is pushing up. I'm just going to go for tracking shots because assist really helps with marks of excellence i'm able to keep this guy perma tracked that gives me 407 assist i retrack him after he repairs 
takes another bit of damage right there, and then I'm able to, well, he ends up dying right there. So that's my defense against the zero line. Now immediately what's going to happen, and this is why, <laughs> this is why, okay, so I went to the red line to make a play, right? What's going to happen is if you're on the red line and you're trying to three mark stuff, like I'm trying to talk about the problem that is associated with sniping all the time, you'll notice that you're going to run out of damage. So what happened here is the super, the conqueror died, the T10 fell back, and whoever else was pushing into my base died. And so what that means for me is that I have to go be aggressive again if I want to continue to get damage. So I fell back to the red line to get safe shots in the enemy. And now that there's no more enemies to shoot at, I'm actually going to have to be hyper aggressive if I want to get damage because you know, 2,265 damage and 1,200 spotting is not enough to get a three mark on a tier 10. So what I decide to do is I decide to flex forwards. I'm going to go back into the center of the map. That puts me in the center of the action. And that's going to allow me to deal with the one line. It looks like the enemy 263 is going to drive down the one line. And it's also going to put me in a really good position to deal with basically everyone else on the map. So I noticed that the T28 prototype has moved up and I know where the RHM is. And then I also noticed that the object 263 is lit. So what this means is because the enemy TDs have all been spotted, there's a very, it's unlikely that anyone's going to be up here. So I'm going to be able to play very aggressively on this hill because no one's in, in a position to really shoot at me. I look for shots in this T28 prototype. <laughs> that one bounces, don't ask me how. And I'm going to continue to be aggressive because I notice I haven't been shot and I still need damage because I want this to be a good game. Now the AMX CDC gets lit and you can see I'm aware you have to be watching your minimap even if you're in a situation like this. The reason I look behind me is because I don't want to get lit on fire by the 263 who will have my ass in a sec here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to get as much damage. I notice the 263 is lit. I don't really want to surrender HP to this CDC unless it's worth it for me, like unless I can kill him. So what's going to happen is I'm going to hold this corner the CDC appears, I put a shot into him, he puts a shot into me, I know I'm going to beat his reload, and he's a one shot for me, because, oh, he was actually a two shot, because he's got 377, in this video, I, when I was playing this game, I thought it was 317, I low roll for 307, he's on 70 HP, and then if you look at the map, you'll see that the 263 does potentially have shots in me, so I need to kill this CDC, and potentially even the super conqueror, before I deal with that 263, because you know, the 263, if I shoot at him, he'll realize that I exist, but he's still a threat. Eventually, he'll realize that I exist. So I notice that the Super Conqueror isn't challenging me. I decide to look behind me and help out my teammates. I'm watching the Super Conqueror right there just in case he decides to try to put a shot into me. I'm able to aim for this 263's lower plate right there. Doesn't go where I'm trying to aim it. This guy's looking at me, so I point my front towards him so he doesn't set me on fire. He ends up missing. And this is kind of like where the panic sets in because here we are on a three mark, you know, I was at 94.94% when I was playing this game and I'm only at 32.48 damage and I've only done 12.48 spotting. So what I need to do right now is I need to be as aggressive as, as possible. I've ended up saving up my HP for the entirety of this game and this is when you go and spend your HP to try to get more damage. So what I'm going to do to try to make this game the three mark game, which it eventually is, is I'm going to drive forwards straight into the enemy now my fear at this point in time was that i would get lit on fire and i would completely throw the game and that would tilt me for the rest of the session so what i'm doing is i'm being as aggressive as i feel reasonable if you look at where the enemies are and where my team is right now i am the most aggressive player on my team and i'm not going to risk getting killed by the clipped out by the lorraine getting hit by the t10 and then maybe set on fire by the rev it's just not a risk that i'm going to take so what i do is as long as I'm shooting at people, I'm not going to throw away HP, I'm not going to risk getting lit on fire, and you can see I'm able to remain hauled down while farming this M4 rev. I lower right there, which stressed me out, I'm only at 4,425 damage now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive straight in. Now this Lorraine looks like he's going to die, so the, the question then, after the Lorraine the Lorraine dies is where the hell is the T10 because I need damage to shoot at the T10. So what I'm going to do is I'm running towards his last known position. I notice that the T54 doesn't spot him. So pretty much immediately I say, okay, where the hell is that T10? And obviously he's managed to find some sort of way to fall back because pretty much ever there's nowhere he could have gone. So what I do is I try to beat my teammates to him because that's going to give me the most damage. I end up spotting the T10. I put a shot of damage into him and then my teammates get the kill right here. And that gives me a bit extra spotting. And um, that's that's kind of how you go about reading situations and just making the most of them. You'll notice I ended up only on 1,000 HP, and that's why I saved my HP. It could have been a lot worse if I had lost more HP to the tier 8s, but that's basically the game. Let's go take a look at the end plates, and um, we'll go from there. I hope this video is helpful. Like, the entire... <laughs> that's, that's literally the average game in a 3-mark situation. It's like you 
go to the uh, an aggressive position right off the bat, which we did in the mid, and then you either fall back or push through. Generally, you're going to fall back because that's safer if you're trying to three mark. You get some shots on whoever's being aggressive, and then if your team is going to win, you go back to the front lines. You get as much damage as you can. You spend your HP to maximize your damage potential and then if your team is going to lose it's like well you've saved your hp all game so you can go farm damage because your team is going to lose so we'll go take a look at the end plates and um yeah we'll go from there as far as my setup goes because i know some of you will be wondering here's my crew i'm uh, running brothers in arms and so on all the way down just screenshot it if you're curious i'm running a v stab rammer and vents standard medium tank equipment setup as well as 30 APCR, 20 heat, food, and then the firefighting directive because you no know, fire extinguisher allows me to run, like it's pretty much required that I run the firefighting directive. So um, yeah, that's my 628. This is how it looks. And that's going to be where I call the video. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And I hope to see you around later, guys. Bye-bye. On my 62A, I'm running food and a firefighting bond thingamajig. So um, Fuck.